At 10 a.m. on a Monday, on the 11th of February 1963, the Beatles entered the Abbey Road Studios to record their very first debut album, Please Please Me. They recorded the entire album in one day over the course of three sessions in that day, and the very first track that they recorded was There's a Place. They made the studio legendary because of their work in it, and this is a piece of history here, the very first recording. Let's check out the track. Here we go, There's a Place by the Beatles. Wow, that's a really pretty ending to that bit. It sounds like a, a harmonica to me. I should probably learn it on the harmonica. But this is a really like, as we would say, based based idea. Very forward thinking. Very like Eastern f philosophy of them. I know they wasn't uh, quite. They hadn't met with the. I think it was like the Maharishi or, or whoever they. I think so. That's who they met when they did their their journey into India. But. This is a very Eastern idea. I like it. When I when I feel low, when I feel blue, oh, there's a place where I can go when I feel low, when I feel blue, and it's my mind. Here, you can't break me here. Interesting. Very um, Buddhist of them. Very meditative. I like it. I think of you. Ah, okay. And things you do. <laughs> beautiful sentiment the idea that regardless of where you were the love the love that you feel for this person is going to keep you from sorrow from feeling blue from feeling blue from feeling alone now in terms of the musicality of the track it really is interesting to see the evolution where they end up because this is i think very fitting of the time i've heard records around this time and it and it is it's in that pocket it's in that feel of pop records of the time obviously they're doing great things in terms of their chemistry and the way they play this stuff is fantastic but then to see how far they reached out eventually wow the growth the growth is really cool to see there. That sounds like it was made to be a hit, for sure, for sure. Um, interesting record. Again, production quality sticks out at me. This thing sounds so crisp, man. It was recorded so long ago. It sounds so great and so full. The instruments really come out. That harmonica sounds so fantastic. It takes the lead part of the of the track so well. Not too much to say here. Again, this is this is Lennon and McCartney learning to write records together. A piece of history. Let's keep this keep this rolling. On to Twist and Shout. Twist and Shout was originally written by a band called The Top Notes. It was then covered by the Isley Brothers, but the most famous version of the song was done by the Beatles. It is said to be one of their most recognizable tracks, especially early on. It was a huge success. It's often considered one of the greatest songs of all time because of its influence and historic importance. But folklore around the track is kind of interesting because the Beatles recorded their first album all in one sitting in one day to 
uh, three recording sessions in that day, they left this to the final recording session. This was the final track that they recorded because of its needs in terms of vocally from Lennon. It would require him to kind of fry his voice if they allowed him to do it first because he came into that session with a cold already, already with a disturbed voice. So this is him at the very kind of end of his vocal uh, endurance, let's, let's say. But here we go. Let's check out the track. The final record of Please Please Me, Twist and Shout by The Beatles. You can hear the hoarseness in his voice. It makes it sound better, if you ask me. The hoarseness of the voice, you can hear it cracking, but it gives it the feeling of like, he's so caught up in the feelings he has for this girl. He just can't control it, he's going crazy. I like it. He added a cool texture. I'm glad he got that cold in 63, on February 11th, I think it was. February 10th, maybe, he, got, he caught it. <laughs> They're so in sync. That groove. This is a hit, man. Straight up. Three voices. Such a good voice. piece of history that's cool man that's cool as a music lover to hear that where it all kind of kicked off in a sense man i know music existed beforehand certainly these guys knew that they were influenced by a lot of uh, blues artists a lot of black artists from america but to hear it in this kind of sense in this innocent sense that it was and it existed beforehand it's still fantastic music but as i've said many times listening to this album this was a different time and they were making pop music of their time even listening to a mccartney interview about classical composers he said the same thing they were making music of their time uh, built to be hits this is certainly built to be a hit and listening to it completely separated from the time and for coming from a different genre um, do all the records in this album strike out to me as things that I would listen to normally? No, but for the historic element of it, to listen to two genius artists find their rhythm, find their style with each other is cool as hell, man. I mean, it's very difficult. I don't know when we'll, as human beings, come up with a time machine, but I think one of the closest things to having a time machine is listening and watching or experiencing art from a different time. And, this is what this experience gave me. Really cool, man. Really cool what listening to this album in general. And hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one of these album runs that I do of the Beatles. Fingers crossed everything will be okay and I can put these videos up on YouTube and the next album will be with the Beatles. Catch you guys then. Peace.